In this grade, every shoebox is important. Every shoebox touches the life of a child. You know, we couldn't do it without you. And we ask, you know, everybody to pray. Pray for one of the children that's going to get the boxes. Listen, God uses those prayers, and he answers prayer. And every year we see millions of children put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ. So thank you. Thank you for your help. Thank you for your support. And listen, keep praying. We need your prayers. The children of the world need your prayers. God bless you. My wireless isn't working, so I'm just going to stand here. The wireless light went out, so it's just quirky. Every single shoebox touches the life of a child. Yeah, I mean, it, they're not just shoeboxes that we're sending to this unknown place, and they just kind of sit there. Every single shoebox impacts the life of a child. Grab a shoebox, fill it up, pray for that kiddo. Pray that that kiddo's eyes would be open to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Pray that that kiddo could reach their family. It's possible that your one shoebox could save one kiddo that saves a whole village of people. We don't know. So get a shoebox. Inside the shoebox, you don't even have to guess. There's the little boy-girl thing that you can... And if you don't have one of these or if you lose it, you could just write it on the box. But this just makes it simple. If you shopped specifically for a boy, girl, or an age group, just mark it on this and tape it on your box. Inside the box, it tells you the items that they suggest for younger kids or for older kids. It says what not to put in. They suggest one wow item, like a teddy bear or something that's just so nice, so, not, so that it's not just pencils and paper and toothpaste, so that there's something cuddly, something cool, you know, a big bouncy ball, something. Um, and again, it tells you what not to do. Please do this. Please pray about this. Pray for the kiddo. We want our church ministry to get beyond these four walls. I mean, look around you. If this is as far as our ministry reaches, come on. We have got to do better than the 200 of us for people watching on camera. We've got to do better than that. This is an opportunity we have to go across the world to reach a whole village of people potentially that have never heard the gospel. And we have the opportunity to do that without personally having to go. We can just spend the seven bucks and you guys don't even have to spend it, the church pays for that. Just spend the money for this to go and it's almost like we're going there giving it to this little kiddo. Imagine their little eyes when they open up your box. So grab a box, fill the box, bring the box. We only have a couple more weeks, guys. Grab a box, fill a box, bring the box. Cool? All right, let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for this church. God, thank you that we have the opportunity to reach beyond these four walls. God, help us not get complacent in our faith. Help us not get complacent in church. Help us not think that this is church, that we come together as a group of believers to encourage one another so that we can leave this building and be the church. God, help us reach the people around us. Help us recognize the lost people all around us. Help us have the courage to speak to them. Give us the boldness. Give us the words to say. Give us the sensitivity when necessary and the boldness when necessary. God, we just want to make a difference for you in this world. We love you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God loves it when the lost get found. <laughs> Elmer.
God loves it when the lost get found. Acts chapter 4, verse 12, the Bible says that there is no other name under heaven whereby we must be saved. No other name under heaven given to men whereby we must be saved except by the name of Jesus Christ. That's the only way to be saved. Uh, we know it. We talk about it all the time. We, we remind ourselves all the time. We hear it in sermons and we read it in the Bible. We can't get saved by coming to church. I love it when you come to church. Can't get saved by being baptized. Love it when people get baptized. Can't get saved by being good. Love it when you're good. Can't get saved by giving money. Love when you give money. But we can't get saved any other way except through Jesus Christ. But the Bible says no one can know that except somebody tell them. And nobody can tell them except they be sent, right? And we want to make sure that we are uh, or obedient and that we find the joy in cooperating with Jesus Christ and, and going out to seek the lost. The Bible says that we were lost in, tra in trespasses and sins. We were lost in our sin, unable even to respond to the things of God until Jesus Christ Himself, until the Holy Spirit Himself, until God the Father Himself went out of His way and he, 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 he wooed us, the Bible says. He drew us to Himself. He selected us. He elected us. He saved us. He picked us. He put us in His family. God loves it when the lost get found. Uh, you know it's my birthday, right? Yay. Special day for me. Special treat. Uh, I, I'm, I'm old enough now that I forget a lot, and I wasn't sure if it was my birthday all day until I found tamales and pecan pie here for me and a bunch of goodies. No, it's been a great day. And it's just going to get gooder. Uh, I'm not going to be teaching tonight. Dad's going to be bringing the message. Uh, we'll give him a hand. Uh, Dad, Dad and Mom uh, raised us to, to, to love the Lord and, and the way we were taught to, to, try, to try to follow the Lord. And, and it's, it's exciting. It's gratifying to be able to be with my family in church. And, and it's exciting to, to know that dad is so concerned, not only about uh, giving his life to the Lord, but about other people giving their lives to the Lord. You know, we talk about the blue books here all the time. Uh, dad's always got blue books with him. And I've seen him give these things out everywhere. He gives them out at the store. He'll give them out at the flea market. He'll give them out if he goes to somebody else's church. He gives them to people here. He gives them to people during funeral services. Dad gives blue books away because he knows that people need to be saved. And you know, this is not the only way. Dad keeps a, a pastor's manual, a minister's manual. In the tr Am I giving away secrets? In the door of Dad's truck, he carries a minister's manual with him. He's, he's ready at a moment's notice to lead in a funeral service, to, to pray with somebody in the hospital. Uh, Dad knows that coming to Jesus means living for Jesus. And uh, he, he loves to read about uh, leading people to the Lord. And he loves to talk to people about that because he realizes that God loves it when the lost get found. You have something to share. You may not realize it, but if you've given your life to Jesus, you have something to share. How about that? Oh, of course, he knows what he's doing. <laughs> Isn't that sweet? You may not realize it, but if you've given your life to Jesus Christ, you have something to share. You have the love of Jesus. You have the word of Jesus. You have salvation that comes only through Jesus Christ. I'm going to lead us in a word of prayer, and Dad's going to come on up, and he's going to lead us in a, in a, in a Bible study tonight. Uh, the soul winner's task, the, the, the privilege and responsibility we have of, of telling people about Jesus. Would you pray with me? Lord Jesus, thank you again that we can celebrate... Uh, uh, yet another birthday and uh, another day together in you. Thank you that we can celebrate this time together as a family. And God, I pray that as you uh, uh, speak to us uh, through the Bible, through your word, God, I pray that we would find more and more and more that joy of living for you, that joy of being able to talk to people about you. God, you've given us a great privilege. Uh, you've given us a, 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 a great task. And God, I pray that we would find ourselves... Uh, up for that responsibility. I pray we would do a great job. Thank you again that I can celebrate this special day with my family and friends. Thank you that we can celebrate this time uh, by listening to Dad bring this message. We love you, Jesus. Thank you for loving us first. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 All right, right, right here. Again. I'm not shaking your hand. I'm Thank you, Pastor. I'm, I'm good. Well, good evening, folks, and welcome to the Southwest Church. 
Some of you know me and others will get to know me. But we are celebrating a special day. And it's all coming out from Matthew 28, verses 18 through 20. If you'd like to follow up in your Bibles, pages 989. First of all, I'd like to tell you just a little bit about Jake Chavis. I am not a man with a lot of credentials. As a matter of fact, I don't have any. I tried to find a replacement this evening, and I couldn't even find one. <laughs> but that's okay. The Lord Jesus said that he would be with me always. I may not have a lot of credentials, but I have the Lord Jesus Christ, and I'm here tonight to tell you about Jesus. I pray that all of you already know him, and I'd like to tell you just a little bit about my Christian faith. You know, the Lord Jesus has blessed me in so many ways. It is so hard to count them. And I'll give you an example. The Lord has given me the gift of salvation. And it was for free. I didn't have to give him a cent for it. I didn't even have to barter for it. The gift of salvation. Second gift that I could give you, there's so many of them, is a wonderful wife. We've been together for about 62 years. She scolds me every time I turn around, scolds me like some stepchild. <laughs> Everything I do is wrong. But that's okay. She has taken care of me like a baby. Third, I would say that the Lord has gifted me and blessed me with a long and healthy life. I'll be 85 this next month. And the Lord only knows whether I make it. I might be able to join you for another few weekends or maybe another few years. Only the Lord knows. And you know, another wonderful gift that I was blessed with is a wonderful family. Two girls, two boys, and more people to get after me. <laughs> to me, it was a blessing because for one real reason. On October the 28th, at about 10.58 a.m., a baby boy was born. And right then and there, the Lord Jesus Christ, not knowing what I was getting into, gave me a task. Take care of that little baby boy. And the Lord has done wonders. Today we celebrate that day. And he happens to be your pastor and mine. Let's give him a big hand. Tony Chavez. You know, it's been a long, hard road. And our lesson for tonight is a soul winner's the word itself scared me. Task. 
That's just like somebody wanting to bite you. But that's exactly what it means. It means to do. To go ahead and tell somebody about Jesus. You don't have to be a real starched, fancy suit character to tell them about Jesus. You can do and you can witness anywhere you're at. Whether you're at work, at play, or at home, washing dishes, wondering what Jake is up to. Anyway, any person that you talk to, you are being a witness. And I'll tell you how. Without even opening your mouth, somebody somewhere is watching your actions. Watching what you do. And knowing that we are all sinners, including myself, only the little ones, but my pastor tells me that a little sin is just as, <laughs> just as valuable as a big sin, and all of them just as bad. If you would like to follow me in your Bibles, if you turn to Matthew 28, I believe in your Bible, you'll find it in about page 989. Is that correct? Yes. 989. And we will... Read it together, because that is exactly our lesson for tonight. The Great Commission. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. We'll stop there for a moment and dwell on it just a moment or two. And you ask yourself the question, what good are we? What is our trade? What is our profession? Some of us have some real high class, highfalutin jobs. I've had all kinds of jobs. Just about everything you could sit there and mention. And I have been blessed. I don't know nothing, but I'm a fast learner. But I'll give you an example of our worth if we do absolutely nothing. Picture a craftsman with all kinds of fancy tools all over the wall, two or three boxes full of tools, and he never takes one out to do something with it. And over here, there is a Jake, born and raised out in the southwest of the state on a cattle ranch, we had to do and do everything. Sometimes all we had was a pair of pliers, a screwdriver, and an adjustable wrench. The reason for the adjustable wrench, that's all we had, and an adjustable wrench fits all <laughs> sizes. But we can say that he who wants to do it can sometimes do more than the one that can. And we have to continue learning 
and doing from the day that we're born. Who was I supposed to know that I was given such a task? To raise my own pastor? Not for my benefit, because he's called me. He's the man that's always after me. He is the man that will stand right up to me. Says, Dad, why do I draw you a line? You're not going to follow it anyway. <laughs> and then that mean woman that I have, bless her heart, she agrees with him. Says, ah, everything he does is wrong, everything, but that's okay. I just bow my head and say, I am a sinner. And if it's real bad, I just keep going, I am a sinner. And I am a sinner. But the thing of it is that we are all given the same task and the same authority that the Lord Jesus Christ gave his disciples. Go unto all the world and preach the gospel to all living creatures. I think that includes me too. Preach the gospel. That's exactly what we're talking about. I have been studying a very interesting little book written by Stephen Allsford. And the title is The Secret of Soul Winning. I like that title. The Secret of Soul Winning. We all witness and we'd like to see results. Right then and there. You know, you'd like to witness to somebody and see those lights turn on like my pastor has lights on our front yard and our trees. We have lights a year round. Most people just have them on Christmas. <laughs> but we all expect to see somebody's ears light up and, and you know, nine times out of ten, you will never know. You might meet them somewhere and the way that they are acting, you get to know them. That's the only way that you say, Lord, thank you. Because it's the Lord Jesus Christ that gave them the salvation and you are the one way, way down there. You might be across the United States, across the world. Is that one person that planted that seed? And I'm going to read just a couple of lines. That's another thing. My son, a pastor, keeps bringing me books because he knows I love to try to read. Sometimes you'll ask me a question about one, <laughs> and I come out with something else. Says that was a good book, wasn't it? <laughs> was it? <laughs> when you get my age, about eighty-five, you know. Sometimes I get, you know, and if he walks in. Sometimes I greet him. Sometimes he just walks in. Yesterday he was there at the house, left a loaf of bread left me another book, and I was in the corner bedroom. And he walks in and everything. But the point is this, that sometimes I wake up from a nap, and I'm totally disoriented. My hair is standing straight up. I get up and I sit on the bed, and I thank the Lord that I have made it another day. But I am very cautious. I make sure that all my limbs work. <laughs> Left foot, right foot, the arms. Once that has been accomplished, I go for the big one. I stand up. 
And after I stand up, I am a little bit tall. And I could have been taller if it hadn't have been for that mean woman. I could have easily been six foot tall, but she's got me wore down to 5'11". <laughs> you know, it makes my feel bad hurt. Let me read you a couple of lines from this book. For reflection and reports. response, the Lord Jesus Christ is our supreme example in the ministry of soul winning. As indeed he is in every other aspect of life and service. Take a few moments to reflect on the statement. Write down or discuss some ways we can learn from his example. When is the anointing of the Holy Spirit? Or what is the anointing of the Holy Spirit? How does the anointing of the Holy Spirit relate to your life and witness? How does the fact that Jesus Christ lives in our hearts and longs to express himself through our lives and impact the way we view soul winning. I think it's their lines that always interest me. Because you can learn each day of your life. I'm only 85, I'm just a kid. You notice I had a little help getting up on the platform. No telling us what I'll need getting down. But to get down is no problem. <laughs> but my pastor says, careful with that old man. Close the gates while he's out in the backyard doing his thing. He says, I just don't want him to go out in the street and ruin somebody's car. <laughs> that goes to show you how concerned he is with me. Because he knows the Lord is with me. And the Lord might just as well, you know, stop the car. Or maybe run right over the top of me and ruin somebody's tire or something. But the point is that we don't know how far we are going to get. So make each day count. You don't have to be a professional. If you're volunteering for something around the church, you are witnessing and you are ministering and you are doing something for the Lord's church. Not Tony's church, not Lauren's church. The Lord has blessed them in a way that they took this building and turned it into a church and a place for this 85-year-old man to walk in and feel like a celebrity. Because I'll tell you what, you people won't believe this. I was treated like royalty coming in. I didn't even drive. My daughter, bless her heart, drove us here. You know why? I tell everybody, I just don't drive at night. To tell you the truth, I can't see the road at night. <laughs> Let me read you a little verse of scripture for study. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe 
all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. So we have all been commanded. And it seems so hard, yet it's so simple. You don't have to be a professional man. I have done all kinds of jobs in my lifetime. When I was a young man, believe it or not, I, I was young at one time. And one summer, jobs were hard to come by. But I look at it this way. If you don't have a job, you can't find a job, make your own job. And I, got, I did. I got a job selling blankets in 100-degree weather in the middle of the summer. I'd grab the whole bundle. I was trained. I'd grab the whole bundle, and I would go right up to the door, sweat just pouring off my face, and I would go right up to that door, and I'd knock. That sounds like, I pray there's no one home. Pray that no one's home. That's how we all are. You know, it's just one of that little knock. I pray that nobody's home. You know, or they might reject me. Or they might say no. Well, I'll tell you what, I think it's a great word, and no, capital no. It's a very important word, and it's just like telling the Lord when he commands it or do something, yes, Lord, I'll do the best I can. And being that he is with you, you have nothing to fear. Absolutely nothing. So I am very blessed by just being able to get up here on this platform. And the Lord only knows how I'll get back down. Either Lauren will hold me up or my pastor will hold me up. They've held me up for years. So this is not the first time they hold me up. They are the ones that keep me in good spirits, close to the Lord. Not too long ago, they took me and flew my wife and I. And one day, our pastor woke us up early in the morning. We went to the airport. He had a flight all booked into Los Angeles, had a car waiting for him there, and he drove us all the way to my uh, sister, sister-in-law that was very sick, a brother of mine in Victorville. Well, going into L.A. and driving all the way to Victorville is just almost like driving back to Albuquerque. <laughs> there was a better way that we wouldn't have to drive and buck all that traffic. But we would have had anywhere from a two to a four hour wait. So they take good care of me. Let them scold me all they want. I've got broad shoulders. And in closing, I would say, and I'll read it one more time, the Great Commission Verse 18, Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. 
and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this special day. Thank you, Lord, that you have given me all these hard tasks. And Lord, I pray that if there is anyone here tonight that does not know you, Lord, know your Lord, Jesus Christ, let today be that special day to get the gift of salvation. It is in your precious name of Jesus that I pray. God bless all of you. How do you do? <laughs> he did a great job. God has given us a great task. He's given us a great commission. He's given us a great privilege. That's to tell people about Him, to tell people about Jesus. Um, Like Dad pointed out, when you talk to someone about the Lord, when you invite someone to come to church, when you invite someone to come to God, you have no idea whether they're going to say yes or whether they're going to say no, but that's not in our control. What is in our control is whether we talk, whether we tell, whether we go, whether we're talking to strangers or even harder, talking to somebody that we know, whether we're going across the ocean or something really difficult going across the street or even really harder, talking to somebody across the table, somebody who knows you, somebody who, who thinks, oh, see, you think you know more than I know. But if you know Jesus and they don't, tell them. You, you have that privilege. You don't know if they're going to say yes or if they're going to say no, but you know someone that you can invite, and that's what Dad encouraged us to do. like every week, but would you like to ride to church with me? Oh, come on, Mrs. Edwards, you'll like my church. We have some hot music. It may not be what you're bumping at all, at all. <laughs> but it's hot. We get down. What do you say, Mrs. Edwards? Oh, uh, I suppose. I've heard it said that 80% of first-time church visitors come because someone personally invited them. All people need to feel loved and wanted, and for some people, it just takes having someone offer to give them a ride to church. We have something great going on at this church. People's lives are being transformed by God's love. Your homework this week is to find at least one person who could use a little more of that love and invite them to come with you next week. Trust me. It's worth the extra effort. Mrs. Edwards, you want to listen to some music on the way? Go ahead, your choice. <laughs> okay, here we are. Here we are. <laughs> when you ask someone to come close to the Lord or invite somebody to come to church, you have no idea whether they're going to say yes or if they're going to say no. That's not our responsibility. Our privilege, our responsibility is just to go tell and just to go talk, to invite them to come close, and we let God do the rest. So not a bad idea. Maybe take it, take it on ourselves, maybe to do a little homework this week. Uh, if, this is, if this is a place where God can bless, then bring them. Bring them. Invite them. Bring them. Pray for yourself. Pray for them. Pray for us. Let's just see what God does. Lord Jesus, 
Thank you for giving us the privilege of trusting you. Thank you for giving us the privilege of, of telling. And thank you for leading us into this great commission, into this great task where we can cooperate with you and, and see people come to know you and see people's lives changed. But God, it's not going to happen if they don't hear, and they're not going to hear if we don't tell. And Lord, we're not going to tell if we haven't been sent. But you said in your word to go into the world and preach the gospel to every creature and to baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And then to observe all things whatsoever you've commanded us and you promised to be with us to the end of the age. So Lord, we pray that we take that, that promise and that commission seriously and that we would actually go out of our way to tell people and then trust you with the rest. So God, thank you for this time. Thank you for this day. Thank you for this church. Thank you for these people. Thank you for Dad bringing this study tonight. And God, above everything else, thank you for saving us. God, please use us to bring someone else close to you. In your name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. God bless you guys. It's Tony's birthday tonight. A lot of the ladies made great food, so hang out with us if you can and enjoy. Yay. Yay.